It's the moment of truth. It's 2022. So if you are a designer, you need a portfolio. So today we are going to do a very quick and easy portfolio that anyone can do. To follow this tutorial, you only need Figma and an account created with Framer. By the end of this video, you will have your portfolio that you can publish and share with anyone. So you won't have more excuses for not applying to those jobs. Let's start by looking at the Figma file that we are going to use for this tutorial. I'm going to leave a template for this file down in the description so you can download it and use it with your own details and projects. But for now, I'm going to use myself as an example just because it's the easiest thing to do. So this portfolio has three parts. We have first a home page. At the top, it has a navigation bar as usual. Then this, it has this sort of header with a description and a tagline of who I am and then a link to three projects. And then at the bottom, we have this footer. Second, we have this about page, very simple, very minimal. It has a bit of a description of who I am with a picture and some software that I can use and my main skills. And at the bottom, it has a call to action to send an email or to download my CV. And finally, we have this reusable project page that you can use for each project and add the different details. At the top, it has a bit of a description of the project with like same tagline as we had in the home page. It has an image. And then what I think is really important, it has a description of what you did in the project so that if you only did information architecture and wireframes, people that read it don't think that you also did visuals and 3D, which I think is quite important, especially if you are a UX designer, for instance, who only does a part of the project. It's really important to show the bits that you did and the thinking process behind it. Then we have a bit more details about the project, the client, project type, and this can be quickly changed to whatever you want. So this could be year if wanted or whatever you want, really. And then we have a couple of sections. Here we have user personas with a bit of space to add the description and maybe explain the thinking process about the personas, why you did them, what were your findings. And then we have another section with sort of a grid. This could be, for instance, user flows, whatever you want. Same, a bit of space to explain the thinking behind and for images and again, footer. So this is the main template. Now, I know it is very minimal. It doesn't have a lot of information, but I think in this case, less is more. So for now, we're going to focus on this, which is the basics, the fundamentals of our portfolio, and let's turn it into a real website. And for that, we need Framer. Now, Framer is a free to use, no code website builder. And what this means is that you can create real websites with designs that you've built in a matter of hours. You don't need to code. You don't need to do very complex animations. You can just take your design, put it there, publish it, and you have a live website. Now, how I see Framer is like a prototyping tool. What it really does is it bridges the gap between design and development. So you can't create really, really complex sites, although you can do really cool stuff with it, but still it allows designers to create their sites and their websites without the need of a developer. They have a lot of documentation that you can read about, but what we are interested about is on the canvas itself. So let's open Framer and have a quick look. Now, the way it works, it's really, really easy. You have this sort of canvas where you can drag and drop things to it, or you can even grab a template and start from there. But what we are interested about is like a fully blank page. So as I said, you have this canvas, you have the desktop, you can add a tablet, you can add a phone as well, but we are going to start with desktop, obviously. And then you can drag and drop layouts. You can drag and drop full navigations or more complex layouts like galleries and grids and testimonials and things that are quite building blocks of a website. So you can do it really quickly. And also what you can do is create a collection. So more like a CMS, you create a template, you add your information and you have dynamic pages that are created based on that content. But what we are going to focus today is on how to bring our designs from Figma to Framer. And we are not going to look into each individual block just because that's not what we are interested about at the moment. So what I want you to do is you go on Framer, you go on learn, 
and then importing from Figma. You can also do Figma to Framer on Google and you'll see the same result. So we are going to download a plugin called Figma to HTML with Framer. I'm going to leave the URL below as well so you can go directly. And you are going to download this plugin onto Figma. So I already have it, but I'm going to do the full process, try it out, and then it opens a blank file. But you will already have the plugin downloaded. To make sure you have it downloaded, you go onto the Figma menu, plugins, and recent. So if it says Figma to HTML with Framer, it works. We are going to start a new project. So we're going to say new, blank site, and we have our blank project. Now, because I've been working with a bit wider website, I'm going to change this. See, when you select an element in the canvas, you can tweak its properties here. So I'm going to say, because I already know it. So here's the bit that I'm obsessed about. You go into Figma, you go to your file, and I'm going to select the navigation bar. Navigation bar is selected. I'm going to go to the Figma menu, plugins, Figma to HTML with Framer, and at the bottom, you will see a bit of a loader saying it's copying or something. So have a look there, copying. Copied 11 layers based in Framer. Now I go to Framer and I simply do Command V or Control V if you're on Windows. And here's my navigation bar directly from Figma. I can center it and put it at the top and you will see, okay, this maybe is an image or I'm just copying an SVG or yeah, a transparent image. But if I go onto layers, I can see that all of this is editable. So it's transforming our file in Figma into HTML so we can copy it into Framer. So maybe instead of contact, I want to say playground. I can quickly change it and that's it. It's so easy. Cool, so I'm going to delete this because it's the frame and I want the navigation bar within desktop. And now I can keep doing this because it's as easy as that. So I'm going to here, plugin, Figma to Framer, same, wait until it's copied. Boom, it's here. It's as easy as that. I'm going to make sure everything is under desktop because I want it to be inside my page. I'm going to put it a bit up. And then what I don't suggest is to copy a full page just because you want to make sure that it copies correctly. But I'm just going to take my full body of my website with the three projects and I'm just to copy it just to see if it works for fun. It's 26 layers, it's not that much. So 26 layers based in Framer. Let's see. I'm going to drop it into desktop. And now here's the thing. Okay, it's below, so I need to pull it up a bit. Still, I need it to be inside desktop, centered. So I'm just going to select my canvas and say auto. So then the canvas takes the size of the contents that are within. And finally, I'm going to copy the footer. There we go. We have a full page that I just copied from Figma and I can tweak anything I want. The text can be changed, the images can be changed. So I'm going to quickly do the other pages just to show you how it is. And then I'm going to link them. So you know how easy it is to create links and interlinks between your pages. So give me a sec, I'll be right back.
So you've seen it. I've very quickly copied and pasted my design from Figma to Framer using this plugin. Now, what I'm going to do is link the different pages from the navigation and the different projects to the project page. So here on the about page, I'm going to go link, link to the about page. Then I'm going to go into the project. So I want, yeah, that would be okay. Project one, and maybe the image as well. Project one. So I'm going to go to about work and link to the home and project I'm going to do. Cool, so these are the basic connections that we need for now, but let's see if it works. So I'm going to go to my home page and click play. There we go, looks good. This is the about page, going to work, project. Perfect, that's all I need. So one thing that you can tweak around and that actually adds a bit of fun to the page is how the elements load. So maybe you can add some effects and add an animation when the page loads, for instance. So you can say maybe the trigger is on view and it will slide. I'm going to say is, let's see if it works. There we go. Maybe it's too much. But you can see that it's very easy to add animation. So same, it can be with this. Maybe there's a scroll animation, scroll animation, scroll animation. Let's see what it does. So this loads in. There we go. And you can play, it has different animations. So you can play with the different transitions on how things load. It has all these presets that you can play around with. Cool. Let's leave it like that. So we have our page now. We have our home page. We have our about. We have a project that we can reuse for each individual project. What now? How do I turn this into a live website? So you simply have to go publish and it will give you this URL that ends with framer.app. But you can add your own custom domain. So you just simply have to buy a domain and add it here at custom domain. I'm not going to do that because I already have my website. But if I go here, this is the website. This is it. And you can take that, share it with recruiters, with companies. And that's it. That's all you need. A portfolio website that works and that anyone can see. So a couple of caveats before we end. So as it stands, the site, it's not responsive. So if you try it on a tablet or on a phone, you will see that it's not laying out as it should. But the Figma file that I'm giving you is using auto layout. So if you go onto Framer and add the breakpoints for tablet and mobile, it shouldn't take you long to make the changes and use it on any device that you want. And the second thing is that I really recommend you to look into collections. It's a much better way to create the pages for your project. The reason is that you will only have to create this collection with your different projects. You will have already your template project page. And every time you create a new project, it will dynamically create a new page for that project. So you won't have to do it over again, duplicating the pages and linking everything again. It's dynamic. You only do it once and it creates it for you. So this is the end of the tutorial. And as you've seen, Framer is super easy to use. It's really quick. You can pick it up really quickly and create a website in a matter of minutes. If you want to learn more about it, I really suggest you to go into the Framer website or their YouTube channel to look into the tutorials, the new features that they keep adding and just keep up to date with the news. Alternatively, you can also look into Skillshare where you will find tons of tutorials on how to use Framer. And if you want, I'm going to leave a link in the description for 30 free days of Skillshare Premium. Let me know in the comments what you think about this way of creating portfolios, about Framer, and also if you are doing your portfolio following this method. And if you do, please share the link with us so we can all see it. As always, subscribe and like this video if you want to get notified when I publish a new one. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.